So this is a Cinewhoop, and uh, I put this together from a little frame like this to capture some pretty awesome cinematic footage, right? You can get some cool stuff from something like this that you just can't get from a professional style drone from DJI. This, I think, is something that most photographers need in their tool bag. Man, they're gonna have to po polish up their FPV skills in order to utilize it, but the results can be pretty fantastic. Stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about FPV drones as cinematic tools. They absolutely can be. Now, this is not the whoop here, but uh, Drew, little FPV rock and the Sony ROX. Uh, we got this thing coming, uh, rocking an anamorphic lens. It's fantastic. Uh, but it just shows you that you can do awesome things uh, with FPV drones. Now, the Cine Whoop is a different sort of deal. Um, and when I see that, uh, what I think of is Nurk FPV, and he really loves the Shen drone squirt, and he did a commercial where he flies through a bar uh, with people. It's a one shot. It's absolutely fantastic. But I think it really highlights why you want a Cinewhoop, right? It's got the ducted propellers. So if something goes wrong, your people are protected. Your drone is protected. Uh, things aren't going to break. Things People aren't going to get hurt. Um, it's just a great tool for flying inside. And uh, yeah, you can fly it outside too. Um, absolutely going to be safer than a five inch quad. Uh, but really these Cinewhoops are pretty darn special and unique. Uh, love them. Now it takes a certain set of skills to be able to do some of the things that you know professional pilots will do with a Cinewhoop or a five inch quad and it's a different set of skills than flying a Mavic or a Phantom so it takes some getting used to but if you can get it down you'll be in some really good shape and you really open up a different niche and a different market than most photographers have access to, right? A lot of people can fly a Phantom or a Mavic. They're really easy with that GPS. Now, uh, the things that these Cinewhoops can do, I love it. Super fun um, and uh, just a lot of fun to fly. Anyway, great footage depending on the camera. Uh, really excited about that new GoPro Hero 8. Uh, gonna try that on this thing for sure. But let's take a look at this uh, Cinewhoop itself and uh, you can see how to build one yourself for uh, about 175 bucks. Okay, so I guess I lied uh, because as of yesterday, Banggood now sells that donut with a Mamba F4 stack, uh, the GEP RC 3500KV motors, which actually I recommend over the 3750s, um, the HQ props that I use. It's basically the setup that I'm, I'm putting together for you. They now sell it as a kit, which I'm glad they do. I asked them to do that. Um, they are. Uh, so yeah, you can pick it up. 116 bucks. Now, uh, it does not come with a VTX. It does not come with the camera it does not come with a battery um so you know you're gonna have to add some of those things so yeah it's not gonna be 116 dollars uh probably looking closer to 150 but you know what that's still a pretty darn good deal definitely want to check that out um i also have if you want upgraded parts i have some lists for those uh definitely all of that is linked down below uh so check that out hey let's keep going all right, I've got my homemade Cine up here. Love this thing. You can see it's got some wear and tear. Uh, it's definitely been abused and abused a little bit, flown it quite a bit. Love this thing. Uh, great way to get some cinematic footage. Um, these whoops are fantastic. And it's really a different class of drone. Um, and it's a great way to get cinematic footage. A lot of people think that professionals are flying high quality drones that come from places like DJI stuff like this and that's true right if i'm gonna do a real estate shoot i probably want this guy this is my mavic 2 zoom that's right i prefer the zoom to the pro for the professional stuff um that's a whole nother story but yeah there are you know some things that i can't do with this guy so i need an alternative and a cine whoop is an alternative and i believe it is a real absolute professional tool um you can get some cinematic cinematic footage uh from these drones and people are doing it with fpv drones race drones but really i think this whoop style this cine whoop style is the way to go it's just a little bit safer with these ducks around the propellers especially flying 
near people. Okay, so you're saying why not just pick up one of these guys, right? This is the Ishin Cinecam, right? It's got the 4K Tarsier camera. You can see I've crashed mine a few times. Uh, but this is really small, really light, um, does a nice job getting into small places. Um, but this camera, while it is 4K, just isn't the best, right? Um, it does a really nice job, and if I need to fly through really, really small t places, yeah, this might be the tool to use. Uh, but I can strap a GoPro on here. I can even strap on my Sony with a uh, one-inch sensor on here and get some really cool footage. Um, I can't do that with this guy, and, you know, I'm not going to fly my 5-inch inside my house. Um, just isn't safe. This is definitely... A little different some really great cinematic footage coming off of FPV drones and it's definitely making its way into the professional photography market and uh, you know let's talk about what this thing is first let's start with the frame uh, this is the frame and uh, really you can build this whole thing for under 200 bucks uh, about 175 when it's said and done um, you know that's kind of depending on do you have batteries uh, you know, remote and all of that stuff, cameras. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, the drone itself, about 175 bucks, or, you know, I'll give you the premium options, but let's start with this. This is the frame, this is the donut. Uh, fits three inch props. It is 140 millimeters uh, from motor post to motor post. Um, carbon fiber, it's pretty solid. H frame, uh, good little deal. TPU ducts here, um, and actually the second iterations these versions better than the first right so uh, this is the frame you can see that I uh, painted mine go with the half chrome theme here uh, this is a half chrome whoop that's what I'm calling this guy uh, but yeah basically uh, this is my guy let's talk a little bit more what uh, kind of motors am I using well let's take a look in here we got the GEP RC 1408 3750 kV motors and they're good. They got plenty of power, plenty of punch, and I'm using uh, HQ 3-inch props here. Uh, that's uh, where I'm getting my power from. Now, the uh, flight controller, uh, this is an interesting one. Love this thing. This is the Mamba F7 stack. Is that overkill? Absolutely overkill. Uh, but the thing I like about it is it actually uh, has SpeedyB Bluetooth uh, built in, right? So I can con connect to this thing via Bluetooth on my phone. Um, and that's pretty awesome. So I can go into the beta flight and change things and I, ha I can do that in the field. And that's nice because as you see these ducks make it difficult to kind of get at the USB in there. Um, so being able to connect Bluetooth is great. Now that uh, flight controller ESC combo, while it is fantastic, it is a little pricey coming in at about $80. So uh, actually what I would recommend if you want to save some money, go with the F4 Mamba stack. I'd probably go the 20, uh, 20 versus 30 by 30, a little bit smaller. Um, you can see this one in particular, uh, the ESCs kind of stick out a little bit. Um, uh, you know, it just kind of makes it getting these ducks in a little bit trickier. can be done, not, not a problem. Uh, but I'd probably go with the 20 by 20, just keep it smaller, simpler, lighter. Uh, that's the way to go. You know, these GEP RC motors, like I said before, pretty good. Um, these 1408s are going to cost you 13 bucks a piece. Um, and if you want something a little bit better, um, you can go with the uh, iFlight Zings, uh, 3600 KVs. Um, they're going to cost you 16 bucks a piece. So if you want a slight upgrade on the motors, go with those. Uh, the VTX in here is the Amway. Um, what is that? The uh, TX006. Um, it's switchable from zero pit mode, right? All the way up to 600 milliwatts. Uh, I get pretty good reception on that. Um, running my Fox here lollipop. So uh, that I'm way pretty economical at 14 bucks. Um, and then one of these antennas is going to cost me about nine. Uh, if you want a better VTX, I really like the Rush Tank. Uh, that's going to cost you 38. Um, but, uh, you know, and if you want to save money on the antennas, go with the uh, real ACC stubbies. They're about half the price, nine bucks for a pair versus nine bucks a piece. Um, you know, that's uh, that's up to you guys. Maybe you have something laying around that you can use. Mount here it comes. Also, it's 25 degrees. Bolts in. Uh, the battery I have on here is actually from my Emacs Baby Hawk R, uh, but I believe it's a GNB. Uh, those are really good batteries. About 20 bucks a piece. Uh, 854S is what I'm running with XT3. 
connectors. You can do XT30, XT60. That's up to you, but 850 is a good size. Um, you can go bigger if you wanted. I also picked up a uh, four pack of the uh, XF Power 4 uh, 850 4Ss, um, and they're $39 for four of them, which is super cheap. No, they're not as nice, but uh, they're also super cheap, and they get the job done. Uh, right now, I'm running, uh, this is an XM Plus receiver, um, and I can use that with really any of my D16 uh, XM remotes, but I've also uh, flown it with this guy, uh, the R9M Lite Pro module, and uh, that is... That's pretty cool, right? Um, I have an FR Sky R9 MM receiver. It's a little micro receiver. I actually switched that up to a different quad because uh, I'm doing some uh, long range testing. But that's basically FR Sky's version of Crossfire, which is pretty good. You can actually upgrade it over the air now, which is pretty cool. Those are a little bit more expensive, right? Uh, an XM Plus will cost you about 18 bucks, whereas a uh, FR Sky R9 will cost you 28. Uh, the modules, I think, $65. Um, so, you know, if you want long range, hey, uh, you got to pay for it. There's also Crossfire, which is absolutely dynamic, fantastic. Um, let's talk about the camera I'm using right now. Uh, this is the Cadex uh, EOS Turbo 2. Um, pretty solid, really inexpensive. I think it was $16. Uh, this is a good basic camera. I also uh, did use the Tarsier, right, this double camera. I love the FPV feed, plus I get 4K uh, footage, so I don't even have to strap a camera on there. Um, but that's a $70 camera, and, you know, getting at the SD card was a little challenge. I actually mounted it on the bottom once or twice, trying it that way, um, which, you know, it can't be done, right? Then, you know, you kind of have to get some, some bigger feet. Uh, other things you're going to have to, you know, think about, you know, do I want a camera? Uh, this Fox here, Box 2, is a good, light, small option, right? I can strap that on there. Actually, I like my GoPro, but I'm recording with it right now, so uh, there's that. I got a GoPro 8 on the way. Can't wait to fly this thing with a GoPro 8. Uh, that will be cool, uh, definitely. Uh, that's the, the top notch. Um, if you don't have a soldering iron, I really like this. This is the TS100. It's 55 bucks. Yeah, that's a little pricey for one. You can get one uh, for about $15. Uh, bang good, Amazon. Uh, but this thing I can use in the field. Runs off a of LiPo if I needed to. Can also plug it in. Um, pretty awesome LCD display. Tells me how hot things are running. Uh, but one thing, for whatever reason, uh, the screws here are gold, except for one. You notice that silver one? Uh, I, was, I, I got shorted one, uh, so I had to add, you know, it's always good to have extra bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a quality little quad. Checks in at 330 grams or so without a camera. If I put a camera, that's with a battery on there, 410. So we're definitely over the 250 mark. I think that's going to be hard to do. The frame itself is about 80 grams. You can lighten up your components if that really is something that you need to have done. But I really like this thing. ton of fun to fly. Uh, one of my biggest gripes is this here, the way that the ducts mount to the frame. Tiny little screws. Um, I'll probably, you know, either drill this out or, I don't know, maybe I'll print some new ones kind of bolted in. Um, but yeah, lots of fun to fly like these things. It's a definitely a different sort of tool. Um, you know what, the, all of the parts that I'm talking about are, are listed below, so you're going to want to check that out um, if you want to build one of these things. Like I said, you can build it for about 170, 175 bucks. The iFlight Cinebi um, is the pre-made version of this, and that's going to cost you almost 300 I think it's like 280 with a receiver, uh, depending on which receivers you get. So, yeah, do it yourself. Save some money. Get some awesome, awesome footage. What do you think? Um, what do you think about the Cine B? You like this style, or are you just gonna run uh, open five inch props and get your cinematic footage that way? Or are you a Ma Mavic DJI guy? You know, what do you think? What do you think about this? Think it's a legit tool? Hey, good luck and happy flying. Thanks for watching.